In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's uh, Gospel text uh, is a portion of Jesus' uh, Sermon on the Plain. Uh, both Matthew and uh, Luke uh, re- record essentially the same event. Matthew calls it, and it's probably the, the term we're more familiar with, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, but they're pretty much pretty equal. They both record almost about the same thing. They both have the Beatitudes and all of that. Uh, the only difference is, is that uh, Luke says uh, that Jesus gathered with his people on a level place, on a plain. So I don't know that that makes any difference to, any, uh, to anything that Jesus teaches there. Uh, but that's where this uh, gospel reading today comes from, uh, from Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount, which he calls the, the, the Sermon on, on the Plain. And the people he's talking to there are, uh, that Jesus are, is instructing is the same as in Luke, uh, uh, Luke tell, as in Matthew. But Luke tells us that there was a great crowd of disciples, this is uh, prior to at the beginning of the sermon, uh, a great crowd of disciples, and that's those beyond, followers of Jesus, beyond the 12 apostles. Again, a little bit earlier in Luke, he takes from all of his disciples, all of those who were followers, he chose 12 to be apostles. So the 12 were certainly there, as well as a number of other uh, of his uh, disciples, great crowd of them. Also, you know, more people as well, those who weren't, you know, yet uh, his disciples, maybe they never did become his disciples. But again, just a huge crowd of people there, and that's, uh, that's to whom he's speaking and teaching. And the section that we have in our gospel reading today begins with Jesus telling that great crowd uh, and all us also, uh, literally it is in Greek, become merciful. That's what he tells them. Become merciful. And so as I thought about that, uh, that sort of strikes me that that indicates that mercy, being merciful, is, uh, uh, is a virtue that people, we, are capable of showing, uh, a virtue that we can exercise. Become merciful, Jesus says. Uh, He wouldn't say that if we couldn't do it. So he says, do that. Um, And he says that you need to become, because apparently, you know, they and, you know, we oftentimes too, don't always tend to do that. We're not always merciful. Uh, Sometimes we are, uh, find it more easy to be merciful than at other times in other situations. But anyway, it's it's a virtue that Jesus says, you can do it, uh, and sometimes you don't. But but you can, and that's what he's going for. And also, it's interesting, I think it's interesting, (laughs) that uh, when Jesus is saying here, become merciful, uh, he's not using the typical Greek word for mercy uh, that you see most other times in the scriptures. And the word he does use, uh, those who know such things, uh, tell us that that, the word that he uses today about becoming merciful uh, stresses having sympathy and, and pity for uh, those who are unfortunate and needy. I don't know if that distinction really makes a whole lot of difference really, but uh, it, it, is, it is there. Become merciful as your Father, as God, is merciful. And there are plenty of times in the Old Testament where we see God being merciful to uh, to the Israelites, in spite of their sin and their rebellion so many times, he still shows them mercy up to other people as well. But uh, Jesus demonstrates that a lot, of course, you know, in his ministry. And we read those in the gospel there where Jesus shows mercy. Uh, occasions when people would uh, come up to him and say, Lord, have mercy. Uh, situations like um, there was this, uh, this man, you probably remember the account, this man who had a son who had seizures, and the seizures would, you know, cause the son to throw himself into the fires and into the water sometime. And so the man come to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, my son. And this man was certainly uh, needy in terms of the, the possession that his son was going through. Um, the ten lepers, uh, they came to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us. And so he heals, heals them. Uh, and then there are a couple of accounts also where there are uh, a couple of blind men sitting by the roadside 
and someone tells them that Jesus is coming, and, they, and as he comes by, the Lord have mercy on us, and, and Jesus heals them. So, again, Jesus carries out this same uh, uh, likeness of the Father uh, in his ministry by showing mercy, and we see that a lot of times. But then in this portion of the, of the uh, uh, sermon on the plain that we have before us today, Jesus says, become merciful as your father is merciful. But then he goes on to uh, expand on what he understands by mercy and what he wants us to understand by it. And uh, in those verses following the, uh, uh, the admonition, it says, be merciful. Jesus says, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, one of the things I think is kind of important to clarify here is that that first thing that Jesus says when he says, judge not. I think it needs to be a little bit clarified because I think oftentimes that phrase of Jesus, that uh, command of his, uh, is, gets kind of misused or misunderstood sometimes. When Jesus says here, judge not, he's not saying that you know, we're supposed to gloss over or ignore sins in, in other people. You know? uh, we're not supposed to do that. Uh, and that's pretty clear because, again, familiar text, of course, in Matthew chapter 18, uh, another word of Jesus here. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. So if you see a brother or sister sin against you, yeah, go tell him. You're not supposed to ignore it. You're not supposed to forget about it. But go tell him. And then, of course, Jesus goes on to say, if, uh, if, if he listens to you or she listens to you, then you've uh, reconciled with this person and uh, you've gained a friend again. Um, but... If that person doesn't listen to you, you know, take two or three others. If he doesn't listen to the, to the, those, then take him to the whole church. The point being is that when Jesus here, and the text says, judge not, he's not saying, you know, ignore people's, other people's sins. You know, overlook them. Don't worry about them. Not saying, not saying that at all. Um, not only do we have this in the New Testament, but, I mean, my goodness, the, uh, uh, how many of the prophets had the assignment to go and point out sin, huh? point out the sins of, of the Israelites um, and others as well, but oftentimes the Israelites, okay? So uh, the prophets went and pointed out sins, and Jesus tells us that uh, we should not ignore the sins of others uh, against us either. And so judge not is sometimes also used uh, as an admonition. You know, you could be talking with some other people, and we may say, well, you know, that person or people in general, you know, that's... That's a sin. And so, oh, no, no, wait a minute. No, judge not, remember. And well, that's not really uh, the way Jesus intends us to use that either. So judge not. The point is, when Jesus here says judge not, and again, he's describing what mercy is, remember. It's all under the heading of mercy, about being, being merciful. Uh, Jesus' point really is here is don't have, what, a judgmental spirit about yourself. Don't be quick to judge other people. In fact, we can kind of flip it over a little bit and say that what, what Jesus is really talking about here is for us um, to be the antithesis, to be just the opposite of the servant that uh, Jesus uh, talks about to illustrate uh, this whole business of mercy. Uh, again, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, uh, and again, it's probably a text that you're, you're familiar with, but again, let's hear it anyway. Jesus says, and it's a parable, Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. He's saying, have mercy on me is really what he's saying. huh? And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Only a hundred, not ten thousand. Only a hundred. 
and seizing him, began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, have mercy, huh? and I will pay you. But the other refused and put him in prison till he should pay the whole debt. Okay? So that's what we're not supposed to be. When Jesus says, judge not, you know, we're supposed to be, not be like that one servant who pleaded for mercy. And the master, Jesus, God, you know, showed mercy. But then this person went out and would not do the same to his fellow. That's what we are not supposed to be like when Jesus is saying, judge, judge not. So Jesus then continues, uh, still in the, in the same text, um, and sort of gives us a picture of what mercy looks like, okay? Uh, and it's here, and again, the text, we've heard it already. Um, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is a picture of God's mercy, huh? And apparently what this is is a, a transaction uh, back in Jesus' day of someone purchasing grain, okay? That uh, the person who's selling the grain, you know, has his measuring bowl or whatever it is, and, uh, you know, it's, it's pressed down. He takes the grain and shakes it to make go to the bottom, press it down, even more, keep putting it on until it falls out. It's so abundant. That's the kind of mercy that God has, and that's what we are called to do. And I, I've never bought grain like that, but one of the things I have done, probably you probably have too, is when you go to one of these roadside uh, fruit and vegetable stands. Have seen anybody seen these? Use these before? I'm sure you have. Somebody nod. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We got a nod there. All right. Yeah. And my, most recently, what uh, we did is we went and we tried to buy some peaches, and they have these baskets out. And they say, there, you know, take a basket, fill it up, and it's, you know, $4 a basket, so whatever it is, whatever the price is. And so you take the thing, and you put the peaches in there, and that's what we did. But you don't stop when you get right to the top, do you? No, it says a basket, whatever you can put in the basket. And so you start balancing more peaches on top, okay? And pretty soon, whoop, one falls out. And so you kind of rearrange the ones underneath, and you try to put it back in there. So you can pile on as many peaches on there as you can, huh? An abundance. And that's the picture that um, Jesus gives in his uh, grain illustration. That's what God's mercy is like. Huh? It's overflowing. Okay? He is not quick to judge. The mercy overflows. You know, he is so generous in his mercy. And that's the kind of mercy the Father shows. And Jesus says, be merciful as your Father is merciful. And so we too are to show mercy to people you know, the overflowing mercy. And so that's the kind of mercy that he calls us to be because that's the way God is. It's that we are not to be quick to judge other people for their sins or uh, for disagreements that we might have. Huh? Not quick to judge, but to be merciful as our Father is merciful in heaven. Or even, a uh, good example we had today uh, in the Old Testament reading of, of what mercy is. Uh, the business of when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead. Now they're in Egypt now, okay, and they'd all moved up there and uh, their families flourished and so forth. But finally, uh, Jacob died. And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father Jacob was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. Remember, sold him into slavery. Huh? So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And not just this time when I was looking at this text, but in the past, I don't know, I sort of smelled a rat there. Um, I wonder, did Jacob really say that to those brothers? I mean, the way it does, it's not recorded in there anywhere. Never recorded that that's exactly what, that's what Joseph, uh, Jacob said to them. But it sounds like, again, once uh, Jacob is dead, the brothers are thinking, well, you know, Joseph was kind to us while he was alive, while dad was alive, but now that dad's dead, boy, he's going to come and get us, so what are we going to do about it? And I can sort of see them huddling together and saying, let's tell Joseph this is what he said. 
If that's the case or not, I really don't know. But it just sort of sounds to me that way. But anyway, uh, that's what they did. Uh, and so they went and they told this to Joseph. And then the, the text continues. Um, Joseph is speaking to the brothers. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus Joseph comforted them and spoke kindly to them. There was mercy, huh? That was an example of one of God's people showing mercy, over, but overflowing mercy. Because they uh, obviously really did uh, Jacob pretty dirty you know, years prior to that. And they were afraid that he was going to come back and be uh, judgment, judgmental against them. But no, he showed them he showed them mercy. That's the kind of mercy that God shows to us. That's the kind of mercy that Jesus says we are to show to others. But even then, still in this text today, uh, Jesus continues to elaborate on this whole theme of becoming merciful. And the whole thing is under the theme of being merciful. Again, from uh, a little bit later in the text today, Jesus says, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? but do not notice the log that's in your own eye. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye when you yourself do not see the log that's in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Again, notice Jesus doesn't say, you know, don't take out the speck, the sin, you know, don't, don't mess with that, you know. He's not saying that. So, yeah, I mean, this whole business of taking out a speck from the brother's eye can, if it's done in the, with the right attitude and spirit, you know, it can be an act of mercy. to try to help a person see the sin that he or she is committing. But we do that only after we have taken the log out of our own eye, huh? Only after that. And how do we do that? How do we get the log out of our own eye? Okay, uh, the sins that are in our own eyes. How do we do that? Well, Jesus says just before that, a disciple, a learner, is not above his teacher. But everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. And our teacher is Jesus. Huh? Our teacher is Jesus. And so what Jesus here saying is what we need to do is continually, regularly sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. Let him teach us. Let him point out even to us the log, whatever it might happen to be, that's in our own eye. Let Jesus point that out to us. And as we sit at the feet of Jesus and have him teach us, then that, if we come with an open heart and open mind to hear Jesus, then that will lead us to repentance. Repentance for our own sins. Repentance for the logs that are in our own eye. And listening to Jesus, our teacher, becoming like him, that is log removal. Then, after we've sat at the feet of Jesus and learned from him, and let his word and his teaching you know, come into our hearts and our minds to lead us to repentance, then we approach our brother and sister about his or her speck as one sinner addressing another. You know, not as one who does not sin, obviously, but that's how we come before our brother and sister to take the speck out of their eye, to point out their sin which is a merciful thing to do, but it also means that we have to also allow another sinner to come to us huh? and point out the speck that's in our own eye. Okay, that has to be a two-way street, and that's brother and sister caring for one another. In fact, I forget which one it was, but I didn't know what hymns were going to be sung today, but there was a verse in our hymn just before the sermon that said essentially that, that same thing. And so when we go to a brother or sister to show mercy. And then that mercy can be even pointing out the speck that's in their own eye after we have removed the log from our own eye by sitting at the feet of Jesus. Then that can be an act of mercy because that is the way God has approached us, is it not? 
he has come to us, you know, and his desire is not to judge. That doesn't say he won't for an unrepentant person. But his desire is not to judge, but to have mercy, overflowing mercy. You know, sometimes we have not only one log in our eye, but maybe several logs in each eye. And still, he shows mercy. And Jesus begins this whole section today by saying, be merciful, become merciful, as your Father in heaven is merciful. And so, are we capable of showing that kind of mercy? Are we capable of becoming merciful, not only in regard to our brothers or sisters' uh, speck in their eyes, their sins, but becoming merciful also uh, concerning having sympathy for or, or pity on the uh, people around us, both near and far, who are unfortunate and needy. Can we become merciful like that? Is that our capability? Of course it is, as long as we faithfully sit at the feet of Jesus, our teacher, and learn from him. Jesus said, become merciful, even as your Father in heaven is merciful. And the teacher enables us to do that. We simply need to listen, to listen with open hearts and minds, and come to repentance then, and then we can be merciful to others. Amen. Now may the peace and the power of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.